So we started. I'm going to start the fabrication of the anterior custom um, guide table. The way uh, the articulated, the, well, the casts are articulated in maximum anticipation. The pin is right now touching the um, guide table. So after using Vaseline to isolate the metal um, anterior guide table, I'm going to raise the pin two millimeters. away from the table. You can see there is a space on the guide table to allow enough thickness of acrylic uh, for the fabrication of the custom interior guide table. The metal tables that raise in at three is too much. Then you require even more material. I see. So, so I'm going to start mixing the acrylic. I will have to use two cups because the amount that is required you can see the size of the dovetail metal guide table. So we'll have to mix two. Always incorporate powder into liquid. Little spatula. Guys, can I have a spatula? Can I have a spatula, please? Try not to overflow the cups. Okay, Dr. Larry, you're using GC pattern resin? I'm using GC pattern resin. This is a type of acrylic that um, shows less expansion than regular acrylic. And it's also fast setting. It takes about 30 seconds to set. Usually it's 12 to 15 seconds, but depending on the area where you are, if you have more, if you have a higher temperature, it will set uh, faster. But the air conditioner, it might take us about 30 seconds to set. Okay. Please. Water's back on. Hmm. I thought it was maybe new. So we incorporate the powder into the monomer to make sure as it goes up. <laughs> make sure you use Vaseline on the pen as well as on the table um, to be able to remove the acrylic from the table. Um, if you were wondering how, if we're using that table with different patients, how do we know? Of course, we need to put the patient's initials on the anterior guide table on the red acrylic, and we'll be able to repositioning, reposition it thanks to that pin that's sticking up from the table as well as the dovetail shape that the metal table has. I made a lot. <laughs> Don't waste so much material. We can have a party later. Yeah, it looks like candy. Okay. After mixing, we want to put something over the mixture so we make sure the monomer doesn't evaporate on us. So as I said before, I already put Vaseline on the table and I need to make sure the tip is isolated as well. It helps also to put some on your fingers, so it might get a little skinny. Um, the use of a dye hardener is um, appropriate in this case to protect your pass. So, 
to string it. It's fairly viscous at this point. Yes, it's not ready yet. You can see how sticky this is. But you don't want to wait until it's in the dough stage because then that doesn't give you enough time. Does it have like an exothermic reaction as much yes, as Yes, it's an exo... Oh, actually more. Really? More. It gets uh, fairly hot. It's really hot. It's not even warm. It's hot. You can really burn your fingers with it. This is a small spatula, so... I just want to... It's not ready for the fabrication just yet, but I just want to start putting it on the table so I have enough time. Make sure you cover all these corners so it's easier to reposition once you take it out. As you see, it's really soft not quite ready to be used. And the I can see right now that I'm going to need some more to be able to create those limiting movements. Excuse me. Oh. Is it going all the way down there? Uh, no, it's two millimeters higher. Actually, because I do want to have some thickness. Should have put more. Look at that. Still on the stringy phase. I just want to make sure it flows into the dovetail. A little messy, you can tell. <laughs> Good job. But if it's still on this face, I can make sure it bonds. And you have Vaseline your fingers, right? Yes, After yes. Our lever? Yeah, I Vaseline my fingers to make it easier to handle. Okay. Note that I'm putting a, a fair amount of acrylic, so I make sure I have enough acrylic to record the border movements. Okay, so with that done, now it's time for me to start recording. Um, note that I uh, loosen the articulator so I can have freedom of movement. I'm going to start with the protrusive movement, okay, all the way edge to edge. I do it a few times to make sure I record that movement. And then we're going to record the canine guidance. Okay, make sure the canines touch all the way to the tips. Okay, make sure you don't pass that tip because what we're trying to record at this point is the Bennett movement or the lateral side shift. Okay, if you go past the canine, the Bennett angle changes and becomes smaller. Or if you don't reach the canine, it also has a smaller Bennett angle. You can tell that the acrylic is already setting. As I said, this sets in about 30 seconds. But, I, but it gives me enough time for me to record all the excursive movements. Once again, Dr. Lara, when you go into protrusive, how far... Edge to edge. edge to edge. You can tell right there. Well, in this particular cast, we only get edge to edge on number eight. Number nine is not long enough, but I guess that's how the patient is. You see here, we're all the way to the canines, tip to tip. The same on the other side. Okay? The anterior guide table should be able to limit my movements. Um, it shouldn't allow me to go past that tip-to-tip -tip on the canines or past the edge-to-edge -edge position in protrusive. This is already set. Just be careful because it's extremely hot. Right there. 
See, it stops right there. If I go past that, then I'm not, this, this is going to help me um, determine the length of my central incisors when I'm fabricating the prosthesis, as well as the length of the canines and the lingual surface of these canines that are going to give me the guidance for um, the prosthesis. Make sure, and of course we already made sure on this cast that when you went to protrusive, your, you have posterior disocclusion, so we have mutually protected occlusion. So after these sets, as, as I said, it's really hot. Uh, we make sure we trim the excess, okay? Make sure you do not touch where the movements end, because if you trim it, what's going to happen is that you lose that record that you made. So make sure you leave intact all the borders around here, around here, same in the posterior. What you can trim though, if you want, is the anterior portion of it. So you make sure when you reposition this table or this custom anterior guide table into the metal table, the pin touches it. So that's helpful to actually trim the anterior portion of the custom anterior guide table. But be careful not to trim the lateral portions of it or the posterior portion of it. Uh, if you want to confirm if your uh, move movements were recorded, um, you can also use articulating paper to stain a little bit, uh, or to mark on the pen and then go back to it. You can also put the articulating paper on it, but then it, it becomes a little messy. So to me, it's neater to add, to use the articulating paper on the tip. Was there already a demonstration? Okay, that way you get some of that black on the on the pen, and then you can record. So, but you know the ultra thin articulating. Yes, so we have to put enough. Are you gonna do my acrylic motor again? Yes. If you want, you can cheat a little bit and then mark it with a. Okay, to remove it, you just have to loosen the screw in the bottom, and it comes right up. And it's time for you to trim it. The worst one. Yeah, we didn't get many in our kit. Should we try this on our own? Yeah. Yeah, this is not gonna be good. As you can tell, I stay away from the. Um, this only to make it neater. You see how rough the the cut is from this guy. It's actually very helpful to remove it from the front. So you just make sure your pen is all the way down when you reposition it on the articulator. I'll put a little air on it. And you're very careful, Dr. Lara, not to trim inside that envelope of function. Yes. We make sure the gothic arch. And what's the reason for the trim that? anterior portion? Uh, just to make sure when you reposition on the articulator, you make sure that the pin is all the way down. To where the little indentation is? Yes. So mm -hmm. you can visually see it? So you can visually see it. Most of the times you just fill it, but it's just yeah. helpful. Let's see if it marks, if it doesn't. Let's see the position, the pin touching that again. Dr. Yes. Okay. Let's get a picture of the. Uh... <laughs> because it's not Very nice, Dr. Lara. Oh. Very nice. What up, Vicks? That's the marks you see. Now you can see the marks by the articulating paper. Beautiful. Those were made with the articulating, with the articulating paper, paper placed on the incisal pin. Yes.
Yeah. Pen. Touching. With clean gloves. <laughs> Mm, very nice. Okay, so you confirm the movements. Edge to edge. And protrusive. Limited by the. Mm. <laughs> left lateral. Okay, so it confirms all of the excursive movements. It preserves, I should say, all of the excursive movements. And here are the marks. Yeah. And now what will you do with that custom incisal guide table, Dr. Lara? What would you do ordinarily in this private practice? We would remove this custom anterior guide table and mark it with the patient's initials or patient number. It depends the chart number, it depends what you like to use on your on your practice. Where's Dr. Jimenez <laughs> to do this for me? Where does he <laughs> there you go, it comes right up. And, uh, and you can see yes. from the markings on it that you can easily reposition I'm sorry, from the marks that you can easily reposition it and on your metal. Underneath as well, right? And you also have It'll be a weekend. the screw yeah. access. So you can put it back and pick it out and put the patient's name or uh, the initials or the patient's number uh, with a burr on it so they don't go away and use it when you're ready to send your case for the prosthesis fabrication. Beautiful. Now, the custom incisal guide table, Dr. Lara, can be made with the patient's own dentition again, as you said before? Yes. If, it, if, the, if you are satisfied or you consider that the anterior guidance of the patient, uh, you have effective anterior guidance, you can do it with your diagnostic casts at the beginning of, of treatment, or um, if you decide to create the patient's and anterior guidance, you do it from the diagnostic cast, you do a wax up, fabricate provisionals, and from those provisionals you take impressions of these provisionals and uh, fabricate the custom anterior guide table. But this usually comes from a diagnostic wax up. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Lara. Very welcome.